Donald Trump. Nostradamus was able to access information which was not available to any of his contemporaries. As such, he was identified as a visionary, a seer, a prophet, whatever name we want to give him. After what happened to Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, the prophetic visions of the infamous Nostradamus are once again being scrutinized. The French seer's cryptic quatrains have captivated the imagination of people for centuries. And now, once again, it is causing the whole world confusion. A centuries-old prediction by Nostradamus for a former president of the United States seems to be repeating. Is the recent event a sign of the beginning of a presidency plagued by chaos and upheaval, or will a new era of peace and prosperity dawn? Join us in this video as we reveal Nostradamus's strange prophecies about a chaotic future that seems to await America. Donald Trump will rise again. A recent horrifying thing attempt on Donald Trump few days ago has shocked the entire world. In his first statement after the incident, Donald Trump said, I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong in that I heard a whizzing sound and shots and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. Trump has also thanked the Secret Service and the law enforcement for their rapid response. He added, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response to the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. He was shot yet had the presence of mind to quickly gather himself enough to know to tell his supporters he was fine and show defiance in the face of danger. That's instinct. At the first public appearance since that unlucky event, Trump walking into the Republican National Convention to loud cheers. He had a bandage on his right ear. The blood-smeared face of Donald Trump, clenched fist raised against the background of the stars and stripes, may be the defining image of his campaign and an enduring portrayal of our times. A few hours later, in a brief press conference, President Joe Biden condemned the shooting and expressed sympathy to his opponent, calling him Donald, in a rare break from the animosity between the two men. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. Mainstream political figures and pundits from across the political spectrum also immediately expressed concern for Trump and the other victims and condemned this act of political violence. Trump emerged from the incident triumphant. As security agents escorted him off stage, he defiantly pumped his fist in the air while his supporters chanted, USA, USA. The former president is basking in all the public and media attention. After the incident, Trump has called for unity and not allowing evil to win. He is a flawed person, and his prowess as a successful businessman is debatable. If nothing else, he has done well crafting an image of power, success, wealth, and fame. However, what happened on July 13, 2024 was unimaginable. The former president survived an accident attempt and escaped with minor injury to his ear. Unfortunately, there was other loss of life and other injuries at the event. Trump, the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party in U.S., has gained much sympathy following the incident, even from his harshest critics. When a person has a near-death experience, it oftentimes signals a turning point in life, a period of much reflection and renewed energy, direction and purpose. Trump almost lost his life. A slight turn, an adjusted aim within millimeters, even a gust of wind, could have resulted in a very different outcome. And for that, he must be thankful to God. In the face of adversity, Trump displayed courage, strength, and bravery, urging Americans to fight for their country, with fist in air. With all of Trump's flaws, he could do some reflecting, clean up his act, and re-emerge polished and forceful. Many, no doubt, would forgive him, as no man is perfect. Getting a second chance at life can do just that. Trump could rebrand himself into a stronger candidate, one who is American first, brave and ready to lead and serve. He could also become more personable 
and even likable. He could position himself to be more purposeful, standing up against violence, hate, and bigotry. It could be an opportunity to lead his party to enact stronger gun laws in the U.S., something they have resisted for decades. God could be speaking to Trump to turn things around for his own good and those around him. Trump's legacy, should he become president, will be the costs of his long-held ambition to ramp up his trade wars and against the world, and particularly China. While it hasn't received much attention, a second Trump administration is threatening a high-stakes gamble to revive America's economy by erecting walls around the country's manufacturing base. The former president's great plan is to return America to an undetermined time, somewhere in the past when the country's industrial might made it a force to be reckoned with. This was a tragedy that was just inches short of becoming one of the darkest days in American history. It was also an inflection point for this year's presidential race and for the nature of our politics. The current and former presidents each have an opportunity to stop this escalation of tensions within American society and help ensure peace and decency prevail in American politics. The whole America should pray together for peace in all states, for the sake of its citizens. The prophecy of Nostradamus could come true, and everybody should pay attention and be prepared for what is to come. Americans should unite together. Let's pray the Lord returns. Prayers and believing in God will change every prophecy. Chaos is escalating severely. Nostradamus the infamous 16th century doomsday prophet and his 1555 text, Les Prophecies, Prediction Wars, Famine, Disease, and Doom, and that gloomy message continues into 2024, and it may happen in America. It's been several years since the United States has appeared more divided than ever. In 2024, the year of presidential elections, the country is at risk of facing unprecedented instability. As debate seems impossible and violence escalates, the specter of a civil war could become a reality in 2024. The targeting of a former president, also the Republican presidential candidate for the November election, at a campaign rally just days before he accepted the Republican nomination, is, by definition, an attack on democracy and the right of each American to choose their leaders. What happened with former President Donald Trump is a horrific moment for America and a sobering reminder of the threat that political violence poses to democracy in the country ahead of the high-stakes presidential election. It is now incumbent on political leaders of both parties and on Americans individually and collectively to resist a slide into further violence and the type of extremist language that fuels it. Americans also must be clear-eyed about the challenge that is confronting this nation. Acts of violence have long shadowed American democracy, but they have loomed larger and darker of late. Cultural and political polarization, the ubiquity of guns and the radicalizing power of the internet have all been contributing factors. This high-stakes presidential election is further straining the nation's commitment to the peaceful resolution of political differences. What was happened with Trump is a horrific moment for America that could have been much worse. But we can't say it comes as a complete surprise. This opens a dark new chapter in America's story of political, shook a nation during one of the most tense periods of its modern history. While Trump is not currently serving as president, his wounding underscores the ever-present threat that always hangs over the office and those who run for it, and especially for those who claim it. There were four American presidents have been assassinated while in office, most recently John Kennedy in 1963, which was predicted by Nostradamus. This prophet told that, the ancient task will be completed. From on high, evil will fall onto great man. A dead innocent will be accused of the deed. The guilty on will remain in the mist. Citing Nostradamus's prophecy, some have said that the dead innocent may refer to Oswald, who a Dallas nightclub owner murdered before his trial, and that the real guilty one got away with it. In fact, before he died, Oswald himself claimed to be a patsy. But because Lee Harvey Oswald never went to trial, it is near impossible to say if he truly was John Kennedy's assassin. 
or if he acted alone. There is still much controversy surrounding John Kennedy's assassination and many questions left unanswered 60 years later. Perhaps Nostradamus really did predict the event and the mystery that would surround it. The fact that Trump was attacked ends a 40-year period in which many have assumed that the Secret Service's expertise had greatly reduced the potential for such outrages and will cast a pall that will last for years, the news network said. Nostradamus Predictions for 2024 Nostradamus was a French astrologer, physician, and reputed seer. Nostradamus himself always rejected the idea that he was any kind of prophet. In fact, had the word been in use during his lifetime, he would have been regarded as, and probably considered himself, a scientist. Born in the south of France in 1503, Michel de Nostradam was the son of a prosperous and historically Jewish family. The 16th century astrologer is best known for his book Les Prophecies, or The Prophecies, published in 1555 as a collection of 942 poetic quatrains that allegedly predict future events. Concerned about being attacked for his astrological predictions, The Prophecies was written in a combination of Greek, Italian, Latin, and Provençal, with the use of mixed word order to obscure the meaning. Nonetheless, many people have decoded his prophecies and suggest that he correctly predicted various world events. There are many references to natural disasters, man-made kalami. Although his predictions offended rival astrologists and could have upset powerful people who might have wished him dead, Nostradamus didn't meet his end in any suspicious or nefarious way. He died in 1566 at the age of 62, a completely respectable lifespan for a man in the 16th century. He was known to suffer from gout for many years, and it's entirely possible that this condition worsened to the point that it caused renal failure. Or he could have succumbed to any number of other conditions likely to have afflicted the elderly and infirm of the era. No matter the cause, Nostradamus did seem to perceive that his end was near. One of his more celebrated predictions was of his own death, which he referred to in the text of his last almanac, at least a year before he actually expired. Although he passed away centuries ago, his prophecies have continued to captivate future generations over the years. Due to the resonance of many prophecies, we need to be really cautious about what he has predicted for this year. While people around the world become increasingly confused, a force will emerge and make the situation worse than ever before. Nostradamus used to shock the world why he mentioned the rise of Hitler. There are two Nostradamus predictions that have been linked to Hitler's rise. Here is the first. From the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people, he who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. And the second, beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. Into a cage of iron will the Great One be drawn, when the child of Germany observes nothing. Hitler was indeed born to poor parents in 1889 in Western Europe. He was also known for his ability to sway people with words, which allowed him to gain immeasurable power and establish the Third Reich. Furthermore, as a part of the Axis powers, Hitler's Germany formed an alliance with Japan, a realm of the East. Some have claimed the word Hister here refers to Hitler, albeit misspelled. As it turns out, however, Hister is actually the Latin name for the Danube River, the second longest river in Europe which flows through much of Central and Southeastern Europe, from the Black Forest in Germany to the Black Sea. The Danube flows through or borders parts of Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, Moldova, and Ukraine, many of which were occupied by Germany during World War II. Supposing Heister refers to the Danube, many have seen Nostradamus's quatrain as a prediction of the large-scale conflict that would affect the region. And it wasn't his only purported prediction about the Second World War. That's why we need to be careful when he mentioned another risen. That is the appearance of the Antichrist. Five centuries ago, Nostradamus wrote of three Antichrists. Two, Napoleon and Hitler, 
have already bathed the world in blood, but it is the third who will bring the apocalypse. And his time has come. There are many names mentioned in connection with the Antichrist. People have made a lot of speculations about the identity of this person. It could be a famous person, rich, eloquent and able to convince people easily he is suspected of being Donald Trump, Joe Biden, or even King Charles. But we also have no certainty about this person's identity. We only know that that evil person has most likely appeared and is showing off his power. We are living in a time when the battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan is heating up as never before. I believe this is because we are nearing the return of Christ and the ultimate destruction of Satan's kingdom. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Please note that there is not one but many antichrists. In the course of human history, many antichrists have appeared and been manifested. Secondly, there is the antichrist, one specific person. That is the final manifestation, the final product of the spirit of antichrist, which has not yet been revealed in human history. I believe his shadow has already fallen across the stage, but we have not seen the actual person. But at the end of this age, scripture makes it clear. There will be one final, supremely evil, supremely powerful ruler, who will dominate the human race for a brief period, who will be the Antichrist. The third form is the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit that operates through every Antichrist. So Antichrist always begins in some way in association with the people of God. But it does not really belong there, and in due course that will be made manifest. That is one mark of the spirit of the Antichrist. With the rise of the Antichrist, let's also be ready for the rise of the new Pope. According to Nostradamus, we could be facing a year that could mean the farewell to Pope Francis, who, at 87 years of age in 2024, has already gone through several health problems. The Pope had to skip the UN climate conference because of lung inflammation and breathing problems. Through the death of a very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. Of him it will be said that he weakens his see, but long will he sit and in biting activity, Nostradamus wrote. While the arrival of a younger, vigorous pope sounds like a good thing, Nostradamus immediately goes on to say that the new leader will weaken his see and that he will be pope for a long time. The exact meaning of weaken is, of course, open to debate. Does he mean the influence of the church will somehow lessen or is some greater scandal on the way? Well, only time will tell. However, it's essential to note that his writings, particularly in Les Prophecies, are written in a cryptic and metaphorical style that is open to various interpretations. Many of his quatrains are vague and can be applied to different events. In addition to the chaotic political and social situation, nature will also pose many challenges for humanity in 2024. According to Nostradamus, something that would mean more weather disruptions with strong storms or increased temperatures. Accordingly, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration recently said there is a one-third chance that 2024 will be even hotter than 2023, and a 99% chance that 2024 will be among the five hottest years has been recorded. This is based on the fact that the world is being affected by climate change due to human burning of fossil fuels, 
along with the El Nino climate pattern emerging in the second half of 2023. That, combined with many natural factors, has caused a series of extreme phenomena, such as snowstorms in North America, volcanic eruptions in Iceland, dense fog, and cold waves causing temperatures to plummet. In India, these cases show some of the harshness that the world is going through. The dry earth will grow more parched, and there will be great floods when it is seen, wrote Nostradamus. He also predicted extreme weather events and world hunger. Very great famine through pestiferous wave, to be precise. The prophet also predicts a cruel tsunami and great floods that will ravage parts of the world, followed by a devastating great famine. Nostradamus warned that the earth will become more arid and there will be great floods. The implication is that the tsunami may impact farmland, contributing to a severe famine. Finally, the Frenchman considered that next year there will be a strong and dangerous earthquake in the world that will mean the loss of thousands of lives. Although the place is not specified, it is reminiscent of what happened recently in Morocco, where thousands of people have lost their lives due to a great earthquake in Marrakesh and surroundings, or the natural disasters that Iceland is suffering at the moment, which could prove Nostradamus right again. Having said that, I will also mention what the Bible says about the end time, and you should try to reflect on the reality with the prophecy from Nostradamus. In Matthew 24, 5 8, Jesus gives us some important clues for discerning the approach of the end times. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. An increase in false messiahs, an increase in warfare, and increases in famines, plagues, and natural disasters, these are signs of the end times. With all of that, all of us need to be very aware of the happening of World War III. The Frenchman predicted the beginning of a new world war, 79 years after the end of the second one. A confrontation around China is something that many geopolitical experts and journalists have started to see in the changing dynamics and rise of China as a global power. In the past, China has showcased its brute force several times in regions around the South, China Sea and Taiwan, most of them through its naval ships. Analysts believe this may allude to the escalating conflict in Asia, with China involving NATO countries, potentially leading to a violent military conflict or an all-out war. Nostradamus also predicted something similar to this centuries ago. In one of his quatrains, he wrote about combat and naval battle. He said that the red adversary will become pale with fear, putting the great ocean in dread. Some think that the red adversary could be referring to China. He could well be referring to what happened in Ukraine, the China-Taiwan conflict, or Palestine. Some interpreters point to every earthquake, every political upheaval, and every attack on Israel as a sure sign that the end times are rapidly approaching. While the events may signal the approach of the last days, they are not necessarily indicators that the end times have arrived. The Apostle Paul warned that the last days would bring a marked increase in false teaching. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. The last days are described as perilous times because of the increasingly evil character of man and people who actively oppose the truth. Throughout Christian history, believers have speculated that the prophesied end times were just about to start. Some audacious ones have even set specific dates. People predicting end times dates usually focus on things like wars, increasing wickedness and natural disasters. They talk about bad things like the increased fierceness of storms, the surge of killer viruses, severe famines and droughts, 
and escalating tensions between nations. There is no doubt that world war will be a part of the future. Christ plainly taught that there would be war prior to his return. Jesus foretold, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Similarly, Revelation 6, 4 foretold a symbolic horseman representing warfare that would take peace away from the earth. To be more specific, the future does hold at least one more world war. There is nothing in scripture that says there will be only a certain number of world wars. World Wars 1 and 2 are not explicitly mentioned in scripture, nor is a possible third world war. It is only the last war that is mentioned in detail, which allows the interpretation that there may be others before the final conflict. So, although there will be at least one more world war, there is no doubt of the outcome. Righteousness will prevail as Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, defeats all who oppose him. It is also worth mentioning at this time that following the 1,000-year reign of Christ, there will be another uprising which could possibly have the scope of a world war. Satan will be bound for 1,000 years and then released. Upon his release, he leads a rebellion among the peoples of the earth. Christ quickly puts down this rebellion and permanently judges Satan, casting him into the lake of fire as he did with the beast, Antichrist, and the false prophet. Not only did he make predictions about influential figures in America, but this famous French prophet also made predictions about a powerful man in England, King Charles III. Recent speculation has surfaced regarding predictions made by 16th century astrologer Nostradamus, suggesting a tumultuous future for Britain's King Charles in 2024 after his cancer diagnosis, which was discovered when he was undergoing treatment for an enlarged prostate. Royal observers speculated that King Charles might step down, either voluntarily or due to pressure related to his health. The revelation of King Charles's cancer diagnosis has left many questions unanswered, with Buckingham Palace withholding details regarding the cancer type and stage. This lack of transparency has fueled both concern and speculation about the monarch's health and the potential implications for the British monarchy. In his renowned work, Les Prophetie, Nostradamus seemingly forecasted the monarch's downfall, including potential abdication or forced removal. Nostradamus predicted the potential abdication of a king and the rise of an unexpected successor, which now seems to echo the current situation involving King Charles and Prince Harry. The ancient prophet said, the king of the isles would be driven out by force and would be replaced by one who will have no mark of a king. Before that, he accurately predicted Queen Elizabeth II's passing at around the age of 96, a prophecy that aligned with Buckingham Palace's announcement of King Charles III's diagnosis following his mother's demise in 2022. However, the question of how Prince Harry, who has shown little interest in royal duties, would end up as king remains unanswered. The royal family has faced its fair share of scandals in recent years. However, the one that garnered the most headlines and caused papers and tabloids across the world to go nuts was Prince Harry's exit from the royal family and the fallout thereafter. Despite his decision to pull back from his familial duties, many wonder if Prince Harry could still rule as king. As is his birthright, otherwise known as birthright privilege, Prince Harry is fifth in line for the throne. In the instance of Charles's death, Prince William, Charles's firstborn son, is next in line for the throne. If something were to happen to William, Harry still wouldn't be next in line, as that would be William's firstborn Prince George, then Princess Charlotte, and finally, Prince Louis. If William were to abdicate, which is highly unlikely, and George was still under 18, then it's a different question. The role of regent means a person who governs a kingdom in the minority, absence, or disability of the sovereign would then perhaps go to Harry until George was old enough to take on his royal duties. Nostradamus predicting Harry would become his successor seems unlikely, but we will never know what will happen after it actually happens.